Are you looking for a small, solid smartphone, a minimalist phone that you can use in real life, in daily life, that will actually do the things you need without getting you addicted? Well, I was looking for that for a long time and I finally landed on the Palm phone, which was really unexpected for me. And I'm gonna share my real thoughts and experiences with this phone after three months of daily usage. This is really nice for keeping you focused, but... Full disclosure, I bought this phone myself. Palm doesn't know me. They have no idea who I am. They didn't pay for this review. If you find this review helpful, check out the description box below for ways to support this channel so we can make more reviews like this for you. Now, if you've looked around for reviews on this phone, you've seen that a lot of online reviews say that this phone is terrible. That's because they completely miss the point of the Palm phone. The Palm phone is not a flagship phone. It's a minimalist phone. It's not designed to have all the bells and whistles that would keep you addicted to it. It is designed to do the bare essentials that you really need a phone to do in the 21st century without getting you totally sucked in. It's small and not distracting. It fits in any pocket, unlike a lot of these ginormous, huge phones that exist today. It's much smaller than even the smallest small phones like the Google Pixel or even the iPhone SE 2 or even the original iPhone SE. This phone is much smaller. So quick demonstration of the difference between the Palm phone and an iPhone 7. There's a small little zippered pocket in these pants that can hold a little bit of something, maybe some coins, maybe some keys. In the past, it used to be able to fit a cell phone back when cell phones weren't huge. But now when I put this iPhone 7 in, it's still sticking up here. It's gonna jam me into the hip and I'm not gonna be happy about that. So I take this out, take my little palm phone and yoink, it drops way down there. You can barely even see that I have any kind of phone because it's tiny. Whereas again, this one, womp. Look at this giant thing. Look at this, look at the size difference. It's ridiculous. It's so small, it's basically impossible to text and drive with. The keyboard requires way too much attention for you to be able to be driving and texting, which is a great thing. And because it's so small, I don't get lost in it. It's just too hard to stare at such a small screen for long periods of time. I tried using a more minimalist phone than the Palm phone in the past. I used a Nokia 3310 for about a week as an experiment. And while that was really great for my mind and helped keep me a lot calmer, I kept missing group text messages, anything that was a group message came in garbled. Anybody who sent me a picture or an emoticon basically sent me lines of code because the Nokia 3310 just didn't know how to work with any of those modern communication methods. Also, the Nokia 3310 couldn't take usable pictures and I couldn't really use the phone to do some basic things that I need to do, like occasionally sending a picture of something to somebody else. Another big problem that I had while using that Nokia was I couldn't listen to music. So I have gotten used to using Spotify to listen to music and Spotify doesn't work on a dumb phone like the Nokia 3310. I bought a used iPhone SE from eBay and used that for a while. It worked reasonably well, but I was still really addicted to that device. And then iOS 13 killed the battery life. That software update was full of bugs and my phone no longer worked very well. So then I found the Palm phone on sale and decided to give it a try. After three months, here's the verdict. I really like this phone, but I'm thankfully not in love with it. I'm not addicted to it. So let's talk about some of the things I like and don't like about this phone after three months of usage. First off, this phone comes with something called life mode. Life mode disconnects the phone from the network, Wi-Fi and your cell network when you put the screen to sleep. That means you don't get notified about messages, phone calls, or anything. This is really nice for keeping you focused, but you need to remember where you put your phone every time because if you 
misplace your phone, you can't call it to find it again. And that's happened to me three times over the last three months. The simple fix is to just be conscientious about where you put your phone. I really like the way the home screen is set up. I have the apps that I actually want to get my attention up top and the apps that I don't really care about are all down towards the bottom or even below the settings section so that I don't see them unless I really want them. One drawback to this phone is that it doesn't have great battery life. The reviews that talk about how bad the battery life is are 100% accurate. If you get this phone, you definitely wanna get a battery pack with it and you wanna make sure that you have chargers at your desk and at home or wherever you know you're going to be often using the phone because this phone's battery will die quickly if you do anything that requires data. I have found that that is actually a good deterrent for getting lost in the phone because I know that using data to browse the internet, send messages, do whatever, kills the battery, I just don't do it that much unless I absolutely have to. Also, because the keyboard is so small, I have to give it a lot of attention so it doesn't feel like just a random thing I'm gonna do. I really have to want to and need to send messages on this phone or browse the internet on this phone. As for typing, I downloaded and installed the Google keyboard that any Android phone can use and it works fine. I use the swiping to type and I sometimes will type. My hands are not huge. I wear a size medium in utility and work and garden gloves. So if you have a hand that's like a size large or extra large, this phone may actually be too small for you to use. I wish this phone had a headphone jack so I could just plug directly in sometimes because in general, Bluetooth seems to fail whenever I want to get down and groovy. But that is a problem that's not unique to this phone. I have had that problem with Bluetooth across all kinds of devices. Finally, I wish this phone were a little bit less laggy. Right out of the box, it seemed to be really good, but over the last three months, I've noticed that it does have a little bit more lag when I'm going from screen to screen or opening apps. However, that lagginess does mean that I don't fall in love with this phone. All those little bits of friction like keyboard size, screen size, and lagginess make it so that I don't want to be staring at the phone all day. And that's something that I really appreciate about this phone. In short, I think this is a great minimalist phone. The Palm phone does the basic things you need it to do without being a super expensive, super fancy device. If you're a power user or you love gaming on your phone, this is absolutely not the phone for you. But if you're somebody who wants a phone that's not distracting, a minimalist phone that's small in size and doesn't try to grab your attention all the time, then I really think the Palm phone is a good choice. Hope that Palm finds success with this phone despite all the negative reviews that are out there on this phone. Selfishly, I want them to keep making this phone and updating this phone so that I can keep buying this phone. I do not want to go back to a big phone again. If you wanna buy this phone, I'm gonna leave links in the description box and if I can find one, I'll drop an affiliate link in there so you can help support future reviews like this. And if your usage of your smartphone has led to forward head and or hunchback posture, be sure to check out the description box below for ways to help yourself fix your body. That's what we normally talk about on this channel. If you have comments, questions, or you wanna hear about some of the settings that I use on this phone to make it work really well for me, be sure to drop a comment down below. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.